This is the Red Dogs podcast, first ever one. Um, you're probably wondering why we chose the Red Dogs. Um, I didn't know, know what it was initially. Justin, you kind of came up with it, yep. let the Holy Spirit move there. Yeah, so with the Red Dogs, um, you know, when a, when a baby buffalo or a bison is born, uh, the, the calf is actually red, so it's covered in red hair, um, and it was termed the Red Dog. So that was kind of where we took everything from the beginning, um, kind of like this upward call into maturity, which I'll let Jamil share on, but basically it is the journey of faith, you know, from a baby all the way up into maturity of Christ. So mm-hmm. that's kind of where we got the term there uh, and decided to run with it. Yeah, so we we both, <clears throat> we've known each other for a couple of years, but um, it was like through, through just, I don't know, small conversations, we started to realize we had a lot more in common than we thought, and bison was was one of our favorite animals. I was like, I can't remember how we had the conversation, but we were like, I was like, yeah, Dude, bison just, is my favorite. And you're like, oh, mine too. Yeah, Do just, we just become best friends? Yeah. In, the, in the trek there, it was like, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it started on, uh, you know, and then, then the, the story of a bison is pretty much, I say the story, I, I would say the most well-known is that they press on into storms so that the storms last longer versus, you know, so like cows, cattle, they'll run away from the storm. They end up staying in a storm a lot longer. So, it was one of those deals where we were like, okay, what if we called, you know, maybe called it Press On Podcast. And then you started doing research and realized that one of the biggest podcasts was for like Press On Nails. And I'm like, I don't want to be associated with that. I ain't it. No association at all with Press On Nails. Well, so Was not hitting. So then we were like frustrated. I remember we were doing like just voice memos back and forth. And then you had talked about, what about Red Dog? I'm like, sure, who's that? And then that's how you came to that explanation. Um, and then I was like, all right, so it's a faith-based podcast. How do we get into the faith piece of it? And then um, we decided to go with <clears throat> it's Philippians chapter three verses fourteen was the initial one, <clears throat> which is I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, and then read the next one verse fifteen. It said, "Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that to you also." So that was one of those deals where it was like, okay, that'd be perfect if we did a baby bison as like an immature Christian, as you press on towards that goal, you become a full grown bison. So that's kind of the overall theme of the podcast or the name at least. Yeah. We kind of wanted to let it flow too, because we wanted it to be more of an open conversation, Mm -hmm. Um, not absolutes because we're very much still learning and growing. Um, So, you know, I, I was super excited about the podcast because I'm looking forward to looking back on these episodes as we progress and how things have changed and how the Lord's revealed himself in different ways. Yeah. Um, just really excited. I know, stupid excited. <laughs> as you can tell from the intro, we were like, yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you just got to go, man. got to go for it. <laughs> well, so obviously not everybody's going to know us. So I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll let you start it off, but with just a testimony. Yeah. Uh, quick testimony here. Uh, born and raised in northern Indiana. Um, you know, grew up, grew up with my sisters, uh, two older sisters, mom and dad, uh, grandparents had a horse farm, uh, show horses, bred horses and all that. So my parents managed that for a time. Uh, you know, we lived in a little trailer outside of the, outside of the farm there. Um, fast forward a little bit there. We moved off of that into our own home, um, started playing soccer at a really young age, mm-hmm. excelled in that, um, came to know the Lord pretty young. I actually remember the exact day I was like four or five years old. And I remember the night that I accepted the Lord in my heart. Um, and that's really, really where the journey started um, for me. Um, and then just kind of grew up into that. Um, I think it's one of those things where it can kind of go two ways. I've always seen it go two ways with people that have been brought up in the faith or have been brought up going to church. You either have the ones that just stick or mm-hmm. you have the ones that are familiar with it, and you're just living your life. That was definitely me. Mm-hmm. Uh, deep down, I always loved the Lord at the end of the day. Um, but I just think there was like a lack of guidance there. And your parents do the best that they can, but my parents didn't come to know the Lord until like after I was, I think they were like leading like a youth camp or something. We were mm-hmm. like at a winter retreat thing for the the Baptist church that we went to <laughs> at the time. And I remember my dad was down. I was like freaking out because like all these men were on my dad, like putting hands on him. Like, what is this? Like, what's wrong with my dad? <laughs> yeah, you don't know. That boy had a demon weird. or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, it was foreign to me, you know. 
And so they they did the best that they could. But um, yeah, just kind of was living my life, excelled in sports. Uh, like I said, soccer was that was definitely my forte, and that was mm-hmm. very much my identity. Um, yeah. Didn't really get into a lot of trouble. I did like the <clears throat> typical thing, like any kid athlete would that you'd see on TV or something like small town yeah. drinking, you know, go to your buddy's house, drink, smoke some weed. Yep. Um, oh. Did that whole thing. You know what I mean? I, I did that. Yeah. I <laughs> did that. One. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I love you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, ended up getting a scholarship to play. Uh, I went to the university of New Mexico. Um, you know, I was, I was a standout athlete mm-hmm. and from there just talk about pride. Right. Um, had a lot of it. Couldn't tell me anything. Mm-hmm. Um, God was very much that thing where it's like praying on game day. Lord, let us win. Lead us to victory. Yeah. Like that whole thing. And I just look <laughs> back now. It's like super cringy. Yeah. Um, good luck charm. Yeah. You have like some like you write a Bible verse on your wrist and I'm just like. Bro. <laughs> yeah. A trigger look. Yeah, that's kind of I for sure did that. <laughs> yeah. Like probably the only Bible verse I knew. And that's not a knock. Hey, trust me. That's not a knock. Okay. But for the type of person I was. Okay. And I'm making myself sound like a dirt bag. Um, <laughs> 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 but really, it was just, you know, Jesus was secondary to me. Yeah. Um, and I think that was just like out of habit. You know, it was just kind of like athletics. I was like, I didn't really apply it until I ran myself into a wall and I had no other option. Mm-hmm. Like that was my entire life story was literally running into wall after wall after wall after yep. wall. And finally, you know, gaining some sense in that regard spiritually or just in my relationship with Jesus. Um, but, you know, it came to a point in college. So I went to the University of New Mexico. Then I transferred to West Virginia University <clears throat> in the Big East. Wanted to get more exposure. That was a dumb move in itself because it was more of like a pride thing. Like, I literally thought, I just, you know, I was just like, no, I deserve more than this. I deserve more than I'm getting. Which, to a point, was true. Yeah. Um, I started and played and all that kind of stuff. But there's just a lot of things I was promised. So I kind of used it as leverage and just got frustrated. I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. You know, hit the transfer portal, went into West Virginia. Played a season there and then left. Um, I had been trained with the Los Angeles Galaxy on and off. Mm -hmm. Um, So went undrafted in that, um, trained and just tried to vie vie for like a a roster position there. Um, And nothing ever came to it, like a practice player. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So when I tried my stint over in Sweden, uh, nothing came of that. And... I'll tell you, like, when things actually came and changed for me, I ended up getting a, a shoulder injury. I thought that was the uh, the nail in the coffin, you know. Um, but come to find out. We're, in the, f- gar- we're in the garage, by the, the way. Garage. That's just <laughs> so people know if we got the, bugs and stuff. It's a large mosquito. Um, we're starting small. <laughs> yeah, but come to find out, that was really the start to where things were going to crash down mm-hmm. for me. Um, I was depressed. You know, I remember my parents, we were playing Marquette, and uh, they drove out to uh, up to Milwaukee to watch me play. And I remember sitting in the lobby, and I was just like, man, I just don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Like, at all. Like, like here, here. In, like, here. Like, alive. Uh, like, yeah. I didn't say it to that extent, but that's how I meant it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm not sure how they took it at that time, but I just had no idea what I was doing. Like, I was just rotting from the inside out. Yeah. And then on the outside, it looked like everything was great. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that catches up to you. Yeah. Especially when... Especially when you are, you know, following Jesus. Mm-hmm. I, I think that for a time, it's like the prodigal son. You know, you can take off and do whatever, but he's he's a pursuer. Yeah. So he's always pursued me. And I just think my own um, choices that I made, it made my life so much harder yeah. in that regard. Um, and I just was not listening, yeah. you know, at all. And I didn't really have anybody outside of that um, to talk to about it. Like, I had good friends, but those relationships were only so deep because nobody was really pursuing the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, nobody was, and I always felt different, right? Like I always just felt, and I don't mean that in like a conceited way, I just didn't relate or like fit yeah. in, you know, even deep down, I could talk to anybody at a, a pretty um, vast like friend group, mm-hmm. you know, everybody like different culture, like music, you know, big into music. So like underground punk music, like I, I love that. Like yeah. that was like what I grew up in. And I loved hip hop and I had this crew over here that was all athletics. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had all these friends, but there was just the depth wasn't there. Um, even had a ton of atheist friends that hated God. Yeah. And still to this day, hate God, but they're, I love them. Yeah. You know? Um, 
So it came to the point where, um, like I said, after I got back, shoulder injury, um, my buddies were actually up. This is the moment where it all changed for me. My buddies were up at the lake house, drove up, um, met up with those guys. They already started drinking pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get there. So I'm like, got to catch up. You know, everybody's having a good time. My buddy's dad, small town, like small little lake town called Cassopolis, uh, had like a, a old tavern, you know, and we'd go up there like a billiard tavern, mm-hmm. had pool tables, blackjack tables, like all these things. It was super cool. Got up there, threw back two beers pretty quick. My buddy got in an argument with his wife um, and he was hammered. Like get this boy was gone um, and he stormed off. He's like, I'm going back to the house. He hops in the car and I'm like, somebody's got to follow this guy. Yeah. I'm like the soberest person there, most sober. I'm like, I'll do it. You know, I only had two beers. Mm-hmm. I'm like 24 or 25 at the time. Um, he blows the stop sign completely. I roll it. All of a sudden, I see lights. Shoo, woo, woo, woo. Well, my super drunk buddy decided to go with me, and he had his shirt off. He started hanging out the car window. Oh, no. And I looked at him like, I'm going to jail. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Guy comes up to me. He, you know, asked me if I'd been drinking. I was like, I had two beers. Um, and then all of a sudden... It's like a quarter mile down the road. The sheriff turns. He goes, he's like, all right. He's like, just let you know the fact that my sheriff is going to come down. He's like, I'm probably going to have to arrest you. Oh. So I ended up having to like blow and do all this stuff. And um, I was like point, <clears throat> like barely over the legal. Like I was coherent. Like I was not drunk. Yeah. Um, But I had beers like quick enough succession to where I was over the legal limit. Mm-hmm. Rightfully so. I get arrested. I get checked into the county there. Um. And when I put on that orange suit, that's like when it all changed for me. I was I looked at myself, right? And I was only supposed to be in there for like two hours or something like that. I think it was like two or three hours because yeah. my limit was so low. That's when I got my phone call, bro. I was in there for 14 hours. Oof. They had like a shift change and a little like clerk person. Because I was like in a holding cell. Yeah. You know, it was like me and one other guy that was like super high on something. Yeah. So he's over in a corner, like just like curled up we in the corner. Know. I'm just sitting there like just tears like rolling down my face. Like that was when I hit my rock bottom. Yeah. You know, unfortunate enough, that was my rock bottom, mm-hmm. but that was like the lowest place I'd ever been in my life. So after that, I remember getting in there and I was just like, Lord, basically me like coming back to the Lord, like whatever, like whatever I'm doing isn't working. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to have to change it yeah. because I want to follow you. I just keep doing these things that I don't want to do and I don't know what I'm doing yeah. like at all. Yeah. Um, but that's when it all changed. Mm. Um, and it was like one of those things where I feel like he had to literally take everything away so that I could focus on him, that he could reintroduce, you know, and just little by little, just kind of like pull me out of that like miry clay. Because mm-hmm. I was stuck. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to figure it out. Something had to happen. He allowed it to happen. You know, a lot of my friends at that time dispersed too. It was like, oh. Yep. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what is this? Yeah. Like, I'm, I was a, you know what I'm saying? Like, down to like hang with y'all, like a road dog, you know, like yeah. ride or die. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't hold it against them. Uh, I just think it was just one of those things that came to a shock. But the miracle on that is I had to show up uh, before the judge there in that court, completely honest with her. I was like, I just told her, like, I accept anything. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. And she, I remember she looked at me, and um, I didn't even lose my license. It got erased from my record. Oh, wow. And it was like it never happened. I think my parents at the time, I mean, I didn't have any money. My parents at the time got slapped with a little bit of a fine. But yeah. that, was, that was the extent of it. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. You know, it gets, it gets a little bit more in-depth, mm-hmm. which I feel like as we go in these episodes, we'll yeah. talk about it more. But just from a brief thing, mm-hmm. a little brief overview, that was that's basically the gist of my story. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. That's uh, <laughs> Yeah. But it's, it, uh, like for you, do you feel like if, if you had to have a theme <laughs> of who the Lord, and you might have already said it, but who the Lord is to you, like who would you say... Or what would you say about that? Um, like, what do you mean? So somebody's asked me before, like, hey, in your testimony, who do you... Like a Bible character? No, 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 not a Bible character. But like, <laughs> a, like, like a, Joseph... if you had to give like a word of like to describe how the Lord has been to you in your life, how would that be? Like for me, it would be persistence or consistent. Yeah. Merciful. Yeah. Super gracious. I think that we don't ever realize how patient he actually is with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to talk about that for me personally, just because as I've read more and pursued him more, there's just been a lot of things that I've just come to understand that, man, 
we are one super entitled. Mm, yeah. You know, from and that can be from a multitude of backgrounds of, you know, just family life or culture or just the way of the world, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say I'd say definitely patient and mercy and grace. Yeah. Like yeah. that's been that has been following me all the days of my life. Yeah. Yeah, mine is similar. Um, I guess because of sports, it's similar. So I grew up, I was born in Alpine, Texas, way out in West Texas, and then um, casual, or gradually moved in, like I guess, further central. Um, but was born out there, lived in the Sierra Blanca for a little bit. Nobody's going to, I mean, I'd be shocked if anybody knew what that was, but Sierra Blanca is a super small town. It was my dad's first coaching job out of college, um, and he was coaching a six-man football team. Mm. And then moved to Fort Stockton, which is a smaller one. That's kind of where I remember we used to go to church quite a bit. Um, but the pastor at the time, from my dad's experience, was trying to keep up with the oil field money. Mm -hmm. So he was driving the Mercedes Benz, and he was I just don't feel like a pastor should be doing that. And I guess he kind of pressed him on tides a couple of times. And my dad checked out of church after that. Um, and I didn't have like a uh, – I guess he, he didn't really have anything against like the church or religion. He just didn't really trust people um, as much. So – we moved to Colleen when I was in third grade, Colleen, Texas, Central Texas. And like I said, my parents are teachers and coaches, so we just, I mean, it was sports. Everything was sports. Um, and I obviously built my identity around that, and everything that I did was to further sports or further football, um, better my character. I'm a big-time people pleaser, so if anybody, anything that I would do uh, reputation-wise that would, I guess, make people think differently of me is what I – you know, that's that was like my biggest fear. Yeah. You know, so everything I did was to to look the part, to have the persona of being like the good old boy, the all American football player kid or whatever. Um, never wanted to disappoint my parents, which is, you know, double edged sword where it's like I, I made decisions more to please people than I did, you know, because I it was what I truly wanted. So that's kind of how my childhood was um, in high school, started getting recruited from, you know, Big 12 schools when it was the old Big 12. So it was like A&M, you know, Oklahoma State, Baylor. <clears throat> You know, all these schools. Yeah. So football really started to take off my junior year. Uh, I got my first offer from A&M and pretty much committed after I went to a game. They got blown out by uh, OU. It was like 68 to 23 or something. Golly. Yeah, I know. And people typically don't commit after a game like that. It's like, I'm out of here. This is my school? It's so trash. But <laughs> it was uh, it was one of those things where it was like all the fans stayed in the stadium yeah. for, to the end of the game. And my high school wasn't like that. Like, if you're losing like 14 to 7 at halftime, they're gone. Mm. Um, so I was like, man, I just like the support. Um, so I committed, loved the coach, Coach Sherman. Uh, so when I was there, it was Ryan or Gerard Johnson was a quarterback. He had just hurt his shoulder, and then Ryan Tannehill was a backup. So he took over. He took over for him like you know midseason or right on, uh, bowl game. Then my second season was Ryan Tannehill's full year. So I sat behind him. I'm like, all right, coming up is my shot. We lose to Texas. Sherman gets fired, and then uh, Coach Sumlin and them come in at A&M, and it's. Um, a battle between me and Johnny Manziel. So then, you know, Money Manziel comes in, obviously wins the Heisman. And so I'm like, well, he's younger than me, just won the Heisman. There's, I mean, that's, I got a dip, right? So during that time, that was whenever, you know, back in high school, I would go to, um, to church probably, I mean, probably once every two months with a friend, one of my friends, Isaiah, uh, Destiny Church out in Colleen. So that was probably the only experience that I really had with church, Mm -hmm. From third grade on up until, um, shoot, probably until at, at A&M. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, I had met Chels, my wife, but, you know, girlfriend at the time. We were going to Breakaway, which was uh, like this student's ministry. You go to Reed Arena, this big basketball deal, and I was just having a hard time. So I would – basically, my relationship with the Lord was was like a genie in a bottle or like a good luck charm. So it was before games, kind of like you said, just say a quick prayer, have a good game, Um and that was pretty much it. I had a Bible, but I hardly cracked it open. I got it from the team chaplain. But it was one of those deals where whenever I got – I shouldn't even say – whenever I lost a quarterback job to Johnny, my whole identity came crashing down. So everything was about football. And even even Jesus was at the time. So Jesus was how he can better my football career. Mm. Um, so that was one of those deals where he basically dumped everything on my head. I mean, it was like, look, football is your God right now. So – We'll strip that away and see who we are. And that's whenever the people pleasing started to come to, you know, the surface, uh, all that stuff. And I remember I broke down. I can't remember what song we were listening to, but we were like in the top row. And I was just like, I was pissed. It was like the week after I was wearing my emotions on my sleeve. 
And uh, we go to breakaway and they're starting um, worship. And then I just break down in tears. She's like, what's wrong with you? And I like never cry. I'm hardly ever emotional. Never cry. And I'm broke down like, like, <laughs> you know, like, like from the chest. <laughs> It was, it was one of those deals where I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, she was like, what happened? I was like, I, don't, I really don't know. And, and looking back, that was probably the first encounter I had with the Holy Spirit where it was like, like now you know. Yeah. you know. Now you know where you've been, what you've been doing. Um, you know, and then other things in college, like, you know, you go to college, you just drink. Never drank anything in high school. First time getting drunk was on our um, <laughs> the official visit. And I, <laughs> I remember, bro. <laughs> the team chaplain came in to give a, and he said, Hey, will you please bow your heads? And I fell asleep during the prayer. It was like a 10 second prayer, fell asleep. I'm like mm. knocked out. So that's kind of where I was faith wise. Um, you know, all that stuff with Johnny that kind of flipped it on my head. And then, and then, you know, you get to, you kind of get to a point where the Lord wants you to like go forward. Like, all right, what's the next step? Like now, now I've, I've told you who I am. Now you need to, basically do some work, you know what I mean? So that's kind of what it was. Uh, once I transferred, so I decided to transfer after that, go out to El Paso. Looking back, that was the Lord kind of separating me because I didn't know anybody in El Paso. And, you know, it's like nine and a half, ten hours away from everybody I know. So that was him kind of pulling me out of everything because had I been around anybody else, there would have been influence around, you know, with, I guess, how my faith developed, essentially. Um, so go out to El Paso. First time I'd been discipled, that's whenever I got baptized. Um, and, and the guy that baptized me out there had put like a pastoral call on my life. He's like, you're going to be a pastor. And I was like, yeah, no shot. I couldn't even tell you the books of the Bible, you know, like the first one and, <laughs> and maybe two of the gospels, like that's about it, yeah. you know, but that was the first time I really started to see who Jesus was and like why you should even act on, um, act on the Lord, you know, or just even a, a nudge or a push from the Lord, I guess. Mm. And, uh, so you go out there get baptized, and then I get picked up after two years by the Cowboys, uh, undrafted free agent, and it was the same same thing. Um, the most sermons I watch, the most I read the Bible, the most I take notes, the most I pray right before training camp and before every practice. So I have a good practice, good training camp, make the team. Then you go into the season, start to relax. So it's like you're in season for football, and I'm like off season for, for God, essentially. And uh, I would honestly probably say I haven't even like really, I wouldn't consider myself to be a real Christian. Um, I wouldn't consider myself to be a real Christian or have considered myself in besides like the past like two years. I wouldn't even say that long, probably a year and a half when I'm like truly committed, truly pursuing the Lord. Um, and, and like I said, there's, there's other stuff like within life, mm. other conversations I have to have before I'm going to air it out on a podcast. But sure. um, there's some other stuff that has, has you know, kind of just kicked my faith into gear. Yeah. But. I mean, what that was a year and a half was about when we met, anyways. Yeah, like two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, you're probably like two and a half years. With the Is Lord. it that long? I mean, two years ago, yeah. We, I've known, like, we were going to that study group for that was two years ago, bro. Yeah, and that, that was a while ago. Yeah, like it was like a January thing or December. Yeah, it's right before the holidays. I remember that. that makes sense. Well, that's kind of. I mean, well, I mean, that's really how this whole thing even got started was because of because of us pursuing the Lord. It brought us to the same spot. Which is crazy that you're from up north, mm-hmm. but it brought us to the same spot through um, a spiritual mentor mm-hmm. and kind of go through this ride with people, you know, it's a relationship that neither one of us have anymore. And I remember whenever that like, kind of fell apart, that was the first time I got introduced to like gifts of the spirit. Yeah. So like the prophetic and all that stuff. So that was a weird, mm-hmm. that was like another, it's almost like you get into, uh, in your journey, like you get to where like you're like on these highs and then you like plateau. Yeah. And then. It's almost like you get into like a valley and then back up again. And that's what that felt like. Yeah. Like a I, plateau I think that's, valley. that's a good one to even discuss because I think like the, you try to like anticipate what the Lord is doing. So like you're meeting expectations, right? So then you start, say you get introduced to something, you're taking something that the Lord might be doing. Yeah. And then you have this anticipation. So when it doesn't start to pan out that way, you go through that high, like, I feel like that's the thing when people don't really talk about when they come into faith is mm-hmm. that not leaning on your own emotions and like you don't realize how much you re- like you really rely on what you're feeling and sensing oh, yeah. 24/7 that there's really no there's no anchor in scripture at that point in time. No. You know, especially when you're first coming into faith or coming back to faith. Yeah. Um like toss with the wind. You're like just yeah. going like whichever way you feel like the Lord's crazy. pulling you. And I feel like that's why a lot of people 
you know, lacking discipleship in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, because they just want to fall away then. It's yeah. like, what's the point? I'm just going to get let down again. So there's always that anticipation of something bad going to happen again. Yeah. Or I don't feel like I did when I first, you know, encountered the Lord. Yeah. And now here I am again, stumbling in the same thing or an expectation of somebody else not being met. Mm-hmm. It kind of get hairy. It, it gets, yeah. I don't even know where I was going with that, but. It's just a wild time. Yeah. It was a wild time is what it was. <laughs> That's, well, you know, it was it's like. Wild a, West. Man, I. Just a couple of examples. There are times whenever it's like we're all like sitting on the couch and it's like, all right, like ask the Lord to give you a word about this couple that comes in. You know, they're they're new. Everybody I want everybody to give them a word. And it was like I appreciated the push at the time, but then there's also part of it where it's like, was I was I really think did the Lord give me a word or was there was that something that I just I've got a creative imagination. Yeah. Sometimes it panned out, sometimes they're like, Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. Just start sweating and like dip out real quick. So you, yeah, I like embarrass. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what I just did. I just ruined somebody's life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that awkward stare. Bro, that's how, I mean, but that's how it is, right? I guess after after that is kind of when I would say when we clicked. I, I feel like we were both kind of, yeah, he's pretty cool, you know. But then I don't know, man. You just start trying to do life, you get into this, some of those those ruts, and then yeah, I think once all of that start finally calmed down, it was like, no, I need to reach back out to Justin. Started going to get coffee and then started figuring out like all the stuff that we like together. And that's kind of how we ended up mm-hmm. doing all this. Ended up at Freedom House together. Yeah. Um, Both left our jobs at the same time, essentially. Transition. Yeah. So it was like a lot of like, it was a lot of life transitions at the same time. Marriages are like basically identical. the same. Yeah, identical. <laughs> Very similar <laughs> seasons. It's pretty like, wild. So you went there too? Yeah, so yeah like, me too. Oh, man. So, yep, okay. I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, yeah. yeah. What else you want to talk about? So we got, I mean, I would say what who the who the podcast is geared for. So that I'll just say what kind of what's on my heart. I I have a passion for the state of men in America. Obviously, masculinity, manhood, all that stuff is being it's it's under attack, right? So I mean, feminism's taking over. And then I mean, there are people who are even confused on what a man is, which is pretty wild for me or to me. <laughs> but we got kids in the background. It's pretty wild. <laughs> it's like <laughs> pure distraction. So it's a good one for the first episode. But it's just like, oh, no many, oh, no many. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Whatever. Anyways, yeah. this this podcast is geared towards men who either are Christian or trying to pursue a better life. Or even if you're not Christian and you're just looking for some form of identity or you're, you're feeling a call to like get out of where you are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where it's, you may not know where to go, but we've been in the same boat. Yep. Um, you know, another part of, I guess kind of really another part of my testimony because I'm so passionate about that is after football was done, that's whenever, I mean, it's really done, you know, it's different whenever you, you're not getting the job you think you should get, but sure. like whenever what your complete identity was built around is, is done for good. You're not ever going to have football back. Um, I went through a, at the time, I was like, no, I'm not depressed, but I, it definitely was a depression. I was looking like Castaway, like, well, sad. <laughs> I mean, it was wild. I was like, man, I don't know. What's, I was watching conspiracy theory videos, still a conspiracy theorist. But, you know, it was one of those deals where I was like, I don't know who I am. I don't know wh- who I want to be, wh- what I want to be. Mm. Um, like I said, at the time, faith wasn't there. But, I mean, it's I, having those types of conversations, I realized that so many men go through that. Yeah. You know, so that's who this podcast is geared for. But I mean, the stuff that we're going to talk about isn't going to be strictly geared towards men. I mean, this is all that's a pretty common deal. Yeah. Identity, all that stuff. So, yeah, mine is exactly everything that you said. So <laughs> it's it's all encompassing in that regard. But even further for me, my biggest heart, you know, always being somebody that's wanted to defend truth is um, really like culture in, in the Western world. Right. Like for me, typically when you talk to somebody about faith. Like, I, and I, and don't hold this against me, but usually when I see people talking about church, like the first thing is like some middle-aged white woman, <laughs> it's got like four kids and like dad's there and they, they go to church and sing the songs, go eat. And then you go watch football or you just check out. Like it's That's like this whole area though. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like, I want people to understand that it is actually so much more mm-hmm. in the Bible is actually way more wild than what we give it time to. Mm-hmm. Like God actually speaks, he talks. Um, and a lot of times we just don't listen. 
Yeah. And it's because of, I don't know what it is, but for me, it's like, it, it makes perfect sense as to why people would view us the way that they do in this regard. It's like you go anywhere else in the world and religion is just a part of your life. It, yeah. is, it is your lifestyle. Yeah. You know, here it's like we show up on Easter, we show up on, you know, for Catholic, it's like Lent or whatever, so you know, true. Good Friday, or you just hit all the main events, Christmas. You know, your church has 5,000 people in it, and all of a sudden you're going to the Christmas play. Yeah. Sweet. That's that's so true. So we went to Bali for our honeymoon, and that was, a, that was the first time I'd felt convicted about, I guess, my commitment to the Lord. Yeah. Now, it's, it's Hinduism over there, so they have like a God, and it has, I think, nine, nine or 12 deities. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong about that, but... It was one of those deals where I would watch them. We would wake up to go like take an early morning walk, and they would be out like giving offerings to their God for you know just blessing their store, or whatever it was. And I was like, I can't. I didn't even pray this morning. And that's how like, it's really just all he's asked is just a relationship. But it was like watching them and their commitment to their God. I'm and I obviously now I truly believe that you know Jesus is Lord, right? So it's one of those deals where. At the time, I was like, "Yeah, this is that." I truly believe that, and I can't even get up to pray or speak to him daily, whatever that looks like. But that's the spot on. Yeah, that's that's really where I'm at at this point in my life. Yeah, is I've always just wanted. I, I don't because I, I mean, it comes out in conversations with my wife. It'll come out in conversations with friends like that. Just naturally, because I know where they're at. You mm -hmm. know, when I'm talking to people, it's like I, I've been there. You know, yeah. that was my perspective for. 20 years of my life, mm -hmm. 25 years. And then, you know, I start getting rocked with words and, you know, when we talk about like kind of bringing it back to like athletics, we would pray before games or pray when season came up. That was honestly like my relationship was fear-based. It was like, I was praying because I didn't want what I feared to happen. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing that I was praying. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Almost at, more at the just end for of it, protection you know, than yeah. anything. Um. So yeah, I mean that's that's really where my heart's at for the yeah. podcast. Uh, another thing too, I actually watched. Uh, I guess kind of goes with your point, um, Andrew Tate, which I know that's like a hot button trigger, <laughs> to, like to even say his name mm -hmm. on a faith based podcast. But it stood out <laughs> so much to me because he, I think he was atheist, then he was agnostic, then he became Christian, mm. and I believe now he's Muslim, and maybe wrestling with that after. Um, a conversation with George Jenko, yeah, who has another faith-based podcast. But um, he had talked about the reason he stopped believing in Christianity and converted to um, being a Muslim was because, he, for him, it's more of a fear-based thing. But he was like, there's no fear of the Lord. He was like, basically, you go to the West, and everybody claims to be Christian, but they don't live a Christian life. They don't pray. They don't read. Nothing about their lifestyle says that they're Christian. But he was saying, I go talk to a Muslim. They don't drink because they're scared of their God, or they respect their God. They have a reverence for him. Um, they honor their wives. They honor, you know, whatever whatever thing they do. Hmm. He was like, they do it because of their God. And then you go to America, and it's like the most wild and free, but they all claim to be Christian. And it's, I mean, that's kind of a, it's a challenge to Christians because if people on the, if people from the outside looking in, see us as Christians as being just like the world, then it's kind of, you know, what are we doing? So that's also, I'll say that's... Isn't Andrew Tate like one of them like big free thinkers? Yeah. Think for yourself, Andrew. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. How are you going to cop out like that? That is a, that is a cop out. <laughs> but it's a good point, right? Because it's like this, you know, mighty man that's, you know, well, for him. But yeah. it's one of those deals where it's like to him, he's, or I guess not even him, other people... There's there's other there's a ton of young men that look up to him and even older men that are like I want to have the lifestyle that he has right so he has this sense of like power and leadership but the reality is he's just like us yeah. lost trying to figure it out I feel like that can, that's that we could go in a lot of directions off of just that a lot of directions but that's who firing. yeah I know <laughs> I'm ready. I'm like mm. take off baby intro In <laughs> <laughs> introduction um. but I mean that's that goes hand in hand with kind of what we have talked about. I mean, you know, some of the land listings that I have, it was one of those deals where we, we went out there to go fish and they end up sitting on the tailgate for 45 minutes talking about faith. And I'm like, Oh, that's the whole podcast right there. It was, so, we've had like 10 conversations where honestly, yeah. we've probably been like season one. Yeah. <laughs> for the, yeah. All of them. 
Dead all, serious. All the, we all probably the got like 24 hours of content that are, you know, with our cell phone company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's really it. But um, I guess, I mean, going into some of the things that we stand for. So obviously, you can hear this is m- mostly from us, right? This is our opinion. Uh, we had decided to come up with some like core values of the Red Dogs podcast. And the first one being it's all about Jesus. Mm-hmm. So if you hear us talk about anything else on the podcast and it's not about Jesus and it's not, it's, it's really not us. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's the truth. It's all about Jesus. Without Jesus, you have no salvation. Christianity isn't even really a thing without Jesus uh, dying on the cross, being you know, risen from the dead. So it's that is the core belief. That's number one value for us. Mm-hmm. And then I know we had talked about it too, but the second point would be that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. So if there's ever a mistake in anything that we're saying, it's 100% going to be on us. Yeah, It's either our lack of understanding, our lack of knowledge. And disclaimer, that's probably going to happen a couple times. I would say <laughs> 50 times an episode, yeah. probably. But I mean, that's that's, that's kind of like the beauty of it. And that's why I'm so excited to do is because I like talking through things. Yeah. You know, um, and my biggest hope is that we would bring that human side to the conversation yeah. rather than being like most cr- Christians where we can, and I'm going to be hard on the Christians the most. Cause honestly, it's like the biggest, easiest target. Like oh, we yeah. are the easiest target. Like yeah. shut up. Like, <laughs> can't talk right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's almost too easy to um, use scripture and it's, it, it's just messy. Let's, yeah. let's just put it that way. Like Christianity in the Western world is messy and it's changing. Like you see a lot of things that God is shaking mm-hmm. and real ones are actually starting to emerge. Mm-hmm. New voices are starting to emerge. There's, I'm excited for that, yeah. but um, it's a challenge. My, yeah, it's a challenge and I just lost my train of thought. So, But that's what it is. It is a challenge. <laughs> it's one of those things where you grow up a certain way where it's a surface level Christianity mm-hmm. and it takes going to a place like Freedom House. I remember the first time I walked in, it was a, it's a... <laughs> I was like, this is a, this is a weird church. <laughs> this dude's like speaking in tongues. I'm like, like bro, I can't even listen to the music because my, my man's back here mumbling. Boy got the snakes out. Oh. Yeah, no, it wasn't that weird. But I was <laughs> like, man, there's people in tears. There's people literally with their face on the floor. And I was, I'm never coming back here. And by the end of the service, I'm like in tears. And yeah. I'm like, this is the greatest thing I think I've ever discovered. Yeah. Uh, and thank you, Lord, for for bringing me to Freedom House because it's. It is a true relationship, or they they at least encourage a true, intimate relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And I have, through all that, realized, I've realized how hard it is for me to get to that level. Yeah. And I want to just shout out Miles and D for that, because I will say <laughs> this, with their leadership, they're the first leaders that I've ever been under in... Um, you know, attending a church and being a part of a community and being invested in it mm-hmm. that I never once did they ever tell you to like do this, this and this or demand or mm-hmm. I guess like they never really like expected anything of anybody Yeah. in the way that I also let me just try and put I'm trying to put my words into thought right here. Um, but it's the first place that I've never been a part of to where they were forceful with anything. And I've seen the most change in my walk with the Lord. Mm hmm last 12 months going on a year at freedom house um i've never seen this much change in myself or been this challenged yeah or convicted and that was super painful dude like let me tell you when we first started going to to freedom house last year um you know that was we channing my wife and i our family was walking through like the darkest season we've walked through yet like there was no certainty in anything like we thought we're going to lose our house. Like mm-hmm. there's just talk about a wilderness season. Um, and when we showed up, it was just, I can't really explain it, but it was the Lord, mm-hmm. just little things here and there. Yeah. And I just, you know, kind of bringing it back to like miles and D I just wanted to shout them out because the way that they're shepherding this church, they don't confine the Holy spirit. They don't confine Jesus to one thing. Yeah. Like he's, he's running the show yeah. every weekend, you know, yeah. Um, and and let the just, Lord be the Lord. And let the Lord be the Lord. And I, I'll say that posture has done more in my life and impacted my family, myself, more than any other thing I've ever been a part mm-hmm. of. You know? Um, so shout out to you guys. We love you. Yeah. No, they yeah, absolutely changed our lives. Because, I mean, it's – I mean, just to reiterate your point, it really is one of those deals where it's like they just 
let the Lord be the Lord. And yeah. that's, they let us feel all the feelings. They're there. They're the most patient. I will say they're the most patient people. I don't know if I could have people complaining to me every day and yeah. not just be like, oh, okay. And Miles just it. smiling. Yeah. Oh, I love you, brother. You know, it's one of those <laughs> deals where it's just like, I mean, just the most loving people, but it's one of those, I mean, it really is. You, you go in there and they're cool with you being uncomfortable. Yeah. They're cool with you not, you know, having emotion or showing emotion. And then two weeks later, they're like watching you break down in front of 80 people. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, but they're also like, yeah, that's what the Lord does. Yeah. He has the power to do all that. But it's, yeah, shout out to y'all because, yeah, I'll be, I don't even know if I, we've, we've gone to like a, we'll call it like a corporate church. Mm. Um, just, you know, after, you know, like on a Sunday or something like that, if we missed uh, with Freedom House. Yeah. We go back in there and I'm like, yeah, this ain't it, baby. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we feel the Holy Spirit marching in here. And I'm like, I don't feel, feel Nathaniel, <laughs> yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> That might be that vent up there. I don't know. That's not the Holy Spirit. But, um, but the, I mean, really, the last core value is, I don't even say it as core value. Really, we kind of already said it. But it's this is our perspective. You're watching two red dogs, immature Christians, march through it until we come to a point of maturity. Yeah. If we get there, and that's going to be a lifelong journey. So this is, we may come up or have some topics that we don't have an answer to. And that's a way that the Lord works. Mm -hmm. And then we could be wrong on things. I know we're going to have an episode talk, uh, episode talking about music, like secularism. And we both feel a certain way about music, right? And I've had conversations with Herson where it's like, okay, I see his perspective, but I also still kind of like this type of music, you yeah. know? But it's one of those hot button topics where it's like that's dividing Christians. And I just don't feel like yeah, it I'm going to have to have that conversation with Herson. Yeah. I don't know. I would actually <laughs> like to have that, like a group combo. <laughs> Uh, we'll bring him in. Because he has some good episode points. Three. I know he just got like lean over. Here, get the mic. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what it is. This, this is our perspective. We're marching through it. We're letting y'all know, episode one, that we are immature Christians um, and we're trying to figure it out. So we may not have the answer and we could be wrong about some things. And uh, I'll yeah. just go ahead. Yes, we are. We, we are. Uh, let's replace immature with uh, we are maturing Christians. We are maturing Christians. Yeah. There you go. There we go. He made me feel like I was like four years old just now. But also, <laughs> I mean, if, if I mean, you're maturing, you know I mean? then that for would sure. mean you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't mature. like that. <laughs> I got you. You know what? Vocabulary matters. Yeah. But that's it, man. This is the Red Dogs Podcast, episode one. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed. Hopefully, we come back next week. Peace.